So the last couple of topics for this semester are integrative. So we're going to see urinary system in action um, and look at why it's so important for maintaining a couple of other electrolytes that we haven't talked about, um, what we've talked about a, a bit. Um, we're not going to do every electrolyte that's in the book. I'm going to start with potassium, um, which we've seen already regulation in the kidney via aldosterone. Um, but I want to kind of go big picture and remind you why potassium balance is so important. So potassium levels in the plasma must be maintained um, as many things in the blood um, are maintained via homeostasis. Plasma potassium is really important because it affects excitable tissues. So that means the heart um, you know all about electrical signaling in the heart now, as well as neurons are going to be affected by altered plasma potassium. Um, so plasma needs to be kept in a normal range. We're going to go back to something you probably haven't seen um, since last semester, maybe. Um, this is looking at membrane potential. Well, you've seen membrane potential with the heart. Um, you have this semester. Um, this conditions here shown are normal potassium levels in the plasma. So this is normal conditions um, with a stimulus that is below threshold. You would not have an action potential fire. Um, it's not a strong enough stimulus. Whereas if you do have a large enough threshold to reach um, a stimulus, I'm sorry, to reach thresh threshold, you would have an action potential fire. That's what's happening on the right here. Normal kalamia means normal potassium levels, right? So this is just saying um, a given stimulus is either strong enough to cause an action potential or not. Uh, we look at that action potential by what crossing threshold and then it's all or nothing um, for this action potential to occur. So if we have altered potassium, you might not be surprised. We're gonna have alteration of how this, um, what this looks like. So the first one I wanna show you is hypokalemia. Hypo means low, right? And we're talking about low potassium in the blood. So here's our cell. Normally, there's higher potassium inside the cell than outside. That's still true here. But levels outside the cell, that's where the blood is, are even lower than normal. Um, this is going to cause hyperpolarization of the membrane. Mem membrane. We have more potassium leaving than normal. Potassium normally leaves the cell through leak channels, but this, there's a larger drive than usual because of that hypokalemia, low levels on the outside. So more potassium will exit the cell, have um, hyperpolarization, and it's more difficult to fire an action potential. This can cause muscle weakness. Um, and on the, the heart, it actually is a little bit different even. Um, you remember the heart has funny channels. Um, in, in the heart will actually increase heart rate because we're reaching that funny, um, that hyperpolarization is what's stimulating those, that regular beating. Um, so we're basically reaching, coming back to um, the funny currents are working more quickly or happening more quickly. So the heart on the heart is a little bit different. Hypokalemia increases heart rate. Um, due to those, how the funny channels work. Um, again, here, you can see that the lower um, hyperpolarization. With the heart, remembering that hyperpolarization is what causes funny channels to open, right? Um, the other end of this then is hyperkalemia. This is when potassium is too high in the blood, right? Um, this is even more dangerous because it makes, especially for the um, the the rest of the body, so like muscles, um, because it makes excitable tissues more excitable initially. So it's actually depolarizing cells, right? Make the opposite of our hypokalemia. Um, so a, a stimulus would cause an action potential more easily. We have more excitability. Um, However, what happens over time is cells aren't able to repolarize fully, and we have action potentials that are smaller or non-existent, um, so results in long-term changes that are a little bit different. Um, 
the heart alterate of the cardiac muscle and can lead to light threatening arrhythmias. Um, due to this, this hyperkalemia. Um, okay, so the disturbances in potassium could happen from ingesting too much um, potassium or loss of potassium in the, in the feces, eating disorders, um, taking diuretics, um, dehydration, um, and one main way that altered levels are um, regulated would be through, you know it already, right? Aldosterone. So aldosterone is going to do what? Aldosterone acts at the distal convoluted tubule, some at the collecting duct as well, um, here is our nephron tube, and here's the blood. Aldosterone is secreted by the um, kidney, the, I'm sorry, the adrenal gland, which is on top of the kidneys. Um, and it is going to travel to the bloodstream and bind to receptors. It's actually, it's a cholesterol um, derivative, so it's able to enter the cell and initiate transcription. Right, we know that cells um, that are able to enter the cell um, are able to initiate transcription and the translation of new proteins. So new channels are inserted into the membrane. This is a potassium potassium pump. Um, these are channels that also, you know, would allow for potassium and, and sodium to pass through on that other side here. Um, so insertion of these new channels that allow for the secretion of potassium um, in response to, to regulate blood calcium, right? So you could upregulate or downregulate these pumps to either increase or decrease potassium levels. This also is a way of regulating sodium in the body as well. So aldosterone regulates sodium, um, many other things regulate sodium as well. Okay. So what this looks like overall, there are these last drawings, is if we have an increase in plasma calcium, I'm not gonna put where this is here, but this would be in the plasma. What's that going to signal? Aldosterone. Aldosterone release. Um, from where? The adrenal cortex. So you know where that is from. Um, aldosterone is going to target the kidney, right? Specifically the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. And that is going to cause potassium secretion. You can see how that is going to decrease plasma potassium. Um, this whole process would also be triggered by low sodium, right? Triggers aldosterone, the kidney would also reabsorb sodium. to maintain normal um, sodium levels as well. Okay, learning check.